showing you guys how to make these glass magnets. The great thing about these magnets is how creative you can get. And all of these magnets are exactly the same. The only difference in all of these magnets is the image on the paper. Now, I've made a bunch of these, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make these for like a fun afternoon craft, as well as a glimpse at how I make them in bulk when I sell them. As always, if you're looking for links to what I'm using in this tutorial, you can look in the description of the video on YouTube, or you can click on the tutorial link, which if you aren't watching this video on my website, you can see a link to it in the description. And on that page, again, is a list of supplies and a helpful image tutorial version of this video in case you get lost at any point. So as always, let's start by getting our supplies. First, we need some cardstock, or you can use chipboard. It's stronger than cardstock, it works as well as cardstock, but it's more expensive. Next, we need scrapbook paper. Just because I said scrapbook paper doesn't mean you can only use scrapbook paper. Try it with glitter papers, photos, or magazine pages, for example. Now, we need our glass dome. Of course, I have a link to these glass domes, but I buy them in bulk. If you'd like to try this at home without getting these perfect little domes, try using glass gems at your local craft store. Next, we'll also need some Mod Podge, Elmer's glue, E6000 and a magnet. The tools I'll be using are scissors, a pencil, and a paintbrush. Optionally, throughout the process of making these, and especially once the magnets are finished, I like to use rubbing alcohol and q-tips to clean off dust and or leftover glue. But let's start making our magnet by grabbing a glass dome. We'll place the dome on the scrapbook paper, pay attention to the, how the design looks under the glass, and once you've found where you want it, Trace the dome with a pencil and cut out the circle you traced with scissors. Now we'll trace a circle again, but this time we'll trace it over cardstock and again we'll cut it out. And just as a side note, because I make so many magnets, I make my own patterns so they always look the same. And then I print them out on paper. If you're self printing, allow the ink to dry for 24 hours. And instead of cutting my paper with scissors, I use my Cricut to cut the paper and cardstock for me. From this point forward, I'll be using my own paper that I printed. Now I need to clean the dome. I'll do this by wiping it with a q-tip and rubbing alcohol and to remove dust from the paper I just blow on it which you can see me doing here with a straw. Next it's time for Mod Podge. We'll need to be careful to not use too much. I do this by adding a single drop of Mod Podge to my paintbrush then make quick thin lines with your brush across the flat side of the dome. Remember to use enough Mod Podge to cover the entire flat side of the dome. Just make sure it isn't too thick, because if the paper gets too wet from the Mod Podge, it will start to make the paper bleed and ruin your image. Grab your paper circle and place the image onto the Mod Podge. Be careful. Make sure it's lined up right, because moving it once it's on the glass can lead to the paper getting torn. Once it's all lined up and pressed down, gently flatten out the paper by gently pressing your thumb into it. Press, don't rub, and let the dome dry for 24 hours. Now get some plain old Elmer's glue and apply it to the back of the paper. Then press the cardstock onto the back, and again, gently press it down. If you have a little too much cardstock poking off the sides, just use your scissors to cut off any excess cardstock. This gives it a much cleaner look. As a tip, when I cut the cardstock with my Cricut, I make them smaller than one inch, and instead I make them a third of the size, so I don't have to cut off excess paper. Now it's time to get out our E6000. For this part, all we need to do is add the adhesive over the magnet and center and press the magnet onto the back of the cardstock. Optionally, I take a Q-tip and wipe down the excess glue. Now we need to let these dry for 24 hours again, and lastly, again, this step is optional. I clean the magnets with a tiny amount of rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. I start by first cleaning the magnet, then clean around the edge of the magnet, and then wipe away any glue, fingerprint, and dust from the dome. Remember, too much rubbing alcohol can still leak through to the paper on the other side, so don't use too much. And there you have it, our very own magnets. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed making these glass magnets with me. 
as I said in the beginning, one of the reasons why I love these magnets is because of how creative you can get. You can see here, this is what mine look like when they're finished being packaged. And I'd love to know what you guys think of these. If you've tried them, I'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.